Welcome to a demo of how I entered the code that I posted on the 5M forums for uh, paired animations for cuffing into the police job script for my server. Uh, the first thing you're going to need is going to be a police job script off of, uh, so go to GitHub and download the latest FX server ESX police job. Let's see, I'll unzip it to the default location for right now, just to... Uh, the other thing you're going to need to have up will be the post here that I actually put in um, the code for doing the paired animations. Once you have police job, you're going to need to, we're going to need to work with the uh, main client, we're going to need to work with the local for whatever local you use. Uh, I'll use English, so I'm going and then we need to work with the server. So you'll need to have these three files open. The first one we're going to work with will be the client, and you're going to go to uh, the Better Animations post on 5M Forum and grab the first four. Register net events. It's the get arrested, do arrested, do uncuffing, and get uncuffed. So once you have all four of these, you're going to paste them into the client script for the police job. And I think it's around 15, line 1567. 1560. Yeah, so the reason I do it here is it keeps it in line with the rest of the script. And this is the last net event that uh, the original script had in it. So you just paste these four in here, and it'll be underneath uh, the uh, last net event before it starts with the citizen create thread for um, drawing markers and whatnot. So the next thing we're going to do is go back to the, the post and grab the server events. And it's only two server events. It's the request arrest and request release events. And on the server, just go to the very bottom and paste them in. Now, because I coded these on my test server, it was just, uh, I wrote this code just to show people how to do this. Um, the name of the actual uh, script I was using was just my code test. So what you want to do is go to ESX police job, copy, highlight code test, and change all occurrences. And it should change one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different things on the server. Uh, what this does is it keeps it in line with the rest of the script. Once you're done doing that on the server script, you can close the server script and save. You can go to the main and you're going to do the exact same thing on the main. It's a highlight code test, change all occurrences, and paste. So it's ESX underscore police job. You can... Technically, you can leave them as code tests, uh, and it will do the job as long as both the server and the client are both listed as code test. But this makes it more in line with the actual police job script. So once you're done with that, we have one more thing that we need to grab off of the main post, and it's in the client version. And it's the very last thing. It's the function for loading anime dictionaries. Just copy this entire thing, go all the way down to the bottom of the main client, and paste it in. And that keeps in line as well because all of the functions are at the bottom of the, the main client. Once you have that in, we are done with the actual post from 5M. So we can start working on actually doing uh, inserting the code. To insert the code into your police job, first thing you need to do is find where it's actually pulling up the menu for it, which should be yeah, right here, line 614. The way police job actually does handcuffing is there's one button that says cuff slash uncuff. So if you click it and a person is already cuffed, it just uncuffs them. And if they're not cuffed when you click it, it cuffs them. My script doesn't work that way, so we're actually going to put in a second button. So you're going to copy this entire line, come down one line, and paste it in, and then change the bottom one from handcuff to uncuff. So you will have one button that says handcuff, 
one button that says uncuff. Now because we did do another button that is pulling from the locale, we need to go to the locale, that's the reason I had to open it. We're going to find handcuff and copy this entire line. Drop it one line down and we're going to change it from handcuff to uncuff. Now because this is uncuff, we're going to make the label uncuff and the top one we're going to make just cuff. Once you're done with that, you can actually close the locale because we're done use, working with that. Now, you have two separate buttons. One that says, well, let me close this. So you have one button that says handcuff, one button that says uncuff. But right now, the script is only designed to take input from handcuff. So we need to scroll down just a little bit, and you'll see else if action equals handcuff, then trigger the event ESX police job handcuff. You need to copy this entire two lines and enter a line down, and then paste. So you will have else if action equals handcuff, else if action equals handcuff. The second one we're going to change from handcuff to uncuff, and then we're going to delete both of the trigger server events, because we're not actually using the server event for ESX police uh, handcuff. Once this is done, we can actually enter my cuffing. Uh, event, which is, oh, and that's, I said we were done, but we're not actually done with the post yet. So go back to the best arrest animations, and in the client part, you're going to see the register command for cuff and register command for uncuff. Copy everything in between the register command cuff and the end, and you're going to paste it into handcuff. Once that is done, you're going to do the exact same thing for uncuff. Now, the one thing I did notice when I was getting ready for this video is I did not put a distance check in to see when you were uncuffing somebody. I assume people would stand right beside them, but... Just to make sure for your server, you might want to actually put in a distance check. If you want to do that, just highlight everything that's above. Copy it and paste it just between the local target ID and the trigger server event. Once you have it pasted, cut out the uh, trigger server event for request release. And paste it over top of the uh, second trigger server event request arrest. And what this will do is it will actually check to make sure that they're close to the person that they're trying to uncuff and then send the cuff. Now, under for the ESX show notification, you can do not close enough to cuff and not close enough to uncuff. So now we have actually done the actual animations for cuffing and uncuffing. But we need to make sure that the police job doesn't do a second cuffing. Um, so we can open this up to find and on handcuff, just arrow, arrow down or move down the script until you get to line 1438. It'll say register net event, ESX police job handcuff. This is where the original script would take it. And the reason it had one button and then would switch back and forth is this is handcuffed equals not is handcuffed. So that means if handcuff was true when it, when this was called, it would set it to false. If it was false, it would set it to true. We don't want that to happen anymore, so you're just going to take this completely out. Under the if is handcuffed, then we're going to remove everything from request anime district down to display radar. That was the original cuffing that the police job script would do. We have our own cuffing, so we don't need that anymore. We're going to leave the enable handcuff timer alone. In case your server has that active, it will allow the timer to still run and will drop off the cuffs from them. Now, under else, you're going to leave the enable handcuff alone as well because that will turn it off if it's and just remove the bottom part. Now, once this is done, you've actually taken away the, the cuffing from the original police script so it will not interfere with the cuffing that we've actually put in. But we still need to make is cuffing, we need to determine if it's supposed to be true or false. And you determine that, or we set that in the functions that we posted 
Uh, are we pasted into the client script when we very first started? So you'll just come down a little bit until we get to the four function that I pasted in, which is get arrested, do arrested, do uncuffing, and get uncuffed. The only ones we actually need to update with is handcuffed to be true or false is the two that's dealing with the person getting arrested or getting released. So get arrested deals with the actual person that's being handcuffed. Uh, do arrested is for the police officer that's doing the arresting. Uh, do uncuffing is for the police officer that's uncuffing the person and getting uncuffed is the actual person getting released. So inside of get arrested, <clears throat> you'll see that I have one called cuffed equals true. This is where I, I actually started doing it on my coding, um, but we actually need to code it for the police job. So you're gonna put is handcuffed equals true. And you can remove the cuffed equals true. And then uh, under get uncuffed is the same thing where it says cuffed equals false, put in is handcuffed equals false. And you could take out the cuffed equals false. Now, anytime that you update the is handcuffed, you want to also trigger event because this is a client event. So we're not going to the servers. It's just triggering an event that's already in the client. And it's going to be called ESX underscore police job handcuff. And if you highlight this, you will notice that there's only one spot that that appears and that's right here. And all this is doing is turning on or off the handcuff timer. So if you don't have the handcuff timer enabled, you can just bypass this part, but it's always good to have it in in case you decide to enable it later. So once that is put in, you just want to copy this and go down to the false and put in the exact same thing. So it will turn on the handcuff timer when they're cuffed. And if you uncuff them, it turns off the handcuff timer. Other than that, uh, the, the reason you set the is cuffed to either true or false is because once it's set to true, it'll actually run all of these commands that disable a lot of the actions the player can do. Uh, disable pan, a lot of people like to actually get rid of that so it allows the person to look around while they're handcuffed. They shouldn't be forced to look in one direction. And then the disable WASD means that they cannot walk around while they're handcuffed. Uh, on our server, we actually have it to where they can walk around while cuffed. So when you get them out of the car, they can walk themselves into the police station um, and not have to worry about um, being escorted in. Um, you, if you have an issue with people running away from you while they're cuffed, you can just leave this in. Uh, if you want to ch try, you can actually just disable these four lines and it'll allow them to walk around. Other than that, if you haven't edited your uh, police job script too heavily, this should automatically, by putting in this code, it should allow your officers to start using the, the paired animations. Um, one thing I will say is on mine, when I was making writing this up, I actually, this part right here, teleports the person in front of the officer so the animation looks very clean. I mean, it puts them right in front of it. So when they go to do the uncuffing, uh, if you have uh, somebody inside of a jail cell and the officer is looking to the side, when he does this to uncuff them, it'll actually warp them out of the jail cell. Uh, so it's probably better just to get rid of the set entity cords and set entity heading for the uncuffing and just tell officers that you need to be looking at the guy when you uncuff him. It might offset the actual animation a little bit, but it's better than them warping out of the jail cell and getting uncuffed. If anybody has any questions, feel free to visit this, web, uh, this forum post called the Better Arrest Animations and leave me a message. Uh, I will get back with you as I get a chance. I'm assuming I'm going to have a lot of DMs and questions about this, so it could take me a little bit, but I will try to get back to everybody. And I hope you have a very good night.